Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to a special edition of Movie Goodness here on the KB Radio Network. I am your host, Kevin Reed, and this is the review of the season one finale of HBO's The Last of Us, episode nine, entitled Look for the Light. How are we doing, everybody? Oh, man, what a season. What a season of television. This was kind of a, uh, I'm not going to say confusing, but I didn't expect it to go through the whole game. Part one of The Last of Us, the video game, is a pretty long game. So is part two, but uh, separate story. Same character, separate story. But part one is long. You know, it's so much content there. And I honestly thought, when they announced that they were making this show that it was going to, you know, the game was going to, you know, kind of last three or four seasons. (laughs) So no, to be realistic, maybe two seasons with just part one alone. And I was wrong. (laughs) Part one, the, the entire game, including the bonus content, which was left behind, uh, all fit in nine episodes. And when you think back in hindsight, at least when I do, if you take away the gameplay, you know, uh, and take away some elements that doesn't exist in this TV show, like the spores and stuff of that nature. Yeah, that is that is about nine episodes worth of TV show. And they did an excellent job of doing that and still keeping continuity with the game. Um, this episode, uh, entitled look for the light is the season finale and it ended precisely like the game did. It it was perfectly, perfectly done with a little added caveat to it. Uh, this, this show opens up or at least this episode opens up with a flashback and we go all the way back to the birth of Ellie and what a tense scene, man. We finally get a, a infected person. You realize in nine episodes, we only got like three that had infected people <laughs> in it. it. It was, that just goes to show you how much more to this show and the game that is there. It, it wasn't just a zombie game or a, a, a zombie show. This show is much deeper than that. But anyways, uh, we get the introduction of Ellie's mother, Anna, who is portrayed by Ashley Johnson in the show. And honestly, that warmed my heart when I saw her on screen. Uh, for those who don't know who Ashley Johnson is, she's a, a, a well-known actress. She, I want to say, I forgot what sitcom when she was a little girl. Was it, was it Growing Pains? I think it was Growing Pains that she was a... a a child, a little child. Uh, I think she played the youngest child on that show. Anyways, most most recently, what she's known for, she portrays Ellie in The Last of Us video games. Yes, Ellie herself played Ellie's mom on the show. And, bruh, you want to talk about, like, wow. It, as soon as she started talking, she has the voice. It's Ellie's voice. You know, it is like, oh, man, it just warmed my heart. And for her to be pregnant and giving birth to Ellie, it was like symmetry. You know, it was it was perfect, perfect casting, perfect. And she she nailed this role Uh, just for the scene that she's in or the two scenes that she's in in soul crushing. Yet again, what this show does, another soul crushing uh, uh, character here and for her to be given birth while being attacked by an infected person and uh, her going through labor and trying to fend off this infected and end up, she does get the better hand and kills it, but not before she was bitten. And this is where we realize this is how Ellie is immune. While, while giving birth to Ellie, Anna is bitten on the leg by the infected uh, almost simultaneously. 
and uh, she tries to cut the umbilical cord before the infection spreads through, but obviously it, it, it happened. But due to the fact that I don't know science, but I'm, I'm just assuming here due to the fact that she's a little baby child, it, it didn't turn her or anything. It just made her immune It's a part of her system. Actually, it, it's explained later on in the episode with Marlene explaining it to Joel that uh, the reason she's immune is because uh, the cordyceps don't know the difference, you know, because they're developing at the same time as, you know, she's developing. So uh, she's basically a walking cordyceps. And yes, they can make a cure through her. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, the scene where uh, Marlene comes in and discovers Anna there with the baby. And uh, she sees the bite. And Anna tells Marlene that, you know, she's hungry. But I, I don't want to nurse her. I can't nurse her because I don't want her to get infected. You know, it, I was like, oh, man, that's right. She can't. <laughs> she can't nurse her. So the baby is just like starving to death and there's no way to get up milk, you know, <laughs> breast milk or anything. It ain't like uh, you can run to Walgreens and get some Similac, <laughs> you know, so it that's equally as devastating as anything. And she tells Marlene to kill her and uh, Marlene can't do it because they're friends. They've been knowing each other their whole lives. Uh, you know, she's like a sister to her, I guess, you know, and she just can't bring herself to do it. And Anna is begging and pleading for her to do this, to kill her. She doesn't want to turn into one of these infected. So she decides to go ahead and do it. And she, she shot her. And we pick up present time and Ellie and Joel are, are traveling to this hospital where we think that she can get the cure or get the cure from her. Uh, with the fireflies and all the while on their little journey where they're talking more, uh, uh, Joel is more open and, you know, cracking jokes and talking about his history, even talking about his daughter, you know, he, he's open because our last time we saw them in episode eight, this is the big moment where Joel just, just takes his guard and lets it all the way down. You know, the cracks were there throughout the season. It, every episode, it got a little wider, a little wider, a little wider. And uh, episode eight, it just broke open. And uh, when he called her baby girl and held her and said, I got you, and that, that was the moment he just completely let his guard down. So now we pick up, and he's more open to her. Uh, but Ellie is kind of uh, distant. She's not her talkative self. It, it's funny how... They flip-flopped in this episode. Normally, it's Joel that's the stoic, does, don't want to talk one, and Ellie is the uh, the busybody, you know, the big, <laughs> always chatting, and Joel's like, do you ever shut up, you know? And now the roles have reversed. Ellie is, uh, she's coming to the end of her journey, you know? She knows that she's about to fulfill her purpose. And at this moment, and I didn't get this through the game, but I did feel this watching this episode that Ellie deep down, I think Ellie knew that if she was going to go and they were going to work on her and try to find a cure that she knew that she was going to die. I think she knew that they were going to kill her in order to get this cure. And it really showed in this episode, you know, with her just in deep thought, like this is my purpose. This is the only reason I'm on earth. Do you know what I'm saying? And we've reached the end. And so we get this scene that when they announced this show and the show came on and we're going through these episodes and uh, getting excited for everyone and we see that it's very uh, 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 faithful to the game, I did not think we were going to get this particular scene. And it's the scene with the giraffe. And I did not know we was going to get that. And I I don't know why, but this was the scene that brought so much joy to me. 
because I didn't I didn't expect us to get that scene because it was so special in the game when you get to that point of the game and you know we're rounding out towards the end and and this happens and it happened again here it, but it just felt different here and uh Bella Ramsey played it perfectly uh her excitement when she saw the giraffe and when she was able to feed the giraffe it it was just it was just nice and then the the conversation that Joel and Ellie have on that building top of that building and Joel trying to convince Ellie that look we don't have to do this we 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 don't have to go to that hospital we can go back to Tommy's you know live our life do this do that you know we don't have to deal with the fireflies and for Ellie to be the voice of reason to say that everything for why would we do that because everything that we did was for nothing you know Tess dying and you know Sam and Henry and all that you know all that would be for nothing if we don't finish this you know let's finish the job and that was like an eye opener for Joel so we get to I think it was Salt Lake City they were heading to and um, Joel conf- uh, confesses to Ellie where he got that scar. You know, Ellie had asked him about that scar uh, about two or three episodes ago on his head. And Joel tells her that, you know, somebody missed. You know, somebody shot at me and missed. And Joel confessed, well, I was the one. I was the one that shot and missed. You know, it was day two after the infection. And Sarah was dead and he had no purpose. He had no purpose and he was ready to die, but he had the gun to his head and he flinched and he's, he said he was ready. There was no fear, no nothing. He was ready, but something made him flinch. And the mental note that I took to myself, it was this, you know, it was like, it was like God moved him, you know, that no, you have a purpose. You know, <laughs> you still have something to do here on this earth. And he pretty much confirmed that uh, when he told Ellie, uh, well, when Ellie told him, like, well, you know, uh, time heals all wounds. And he looked over and told her, like, it wasn't time. You know, it was her. It was her that healed it. You know, it was her that allowed him to let his guard down. It was her that allowed him to be a dad again. And he found purpose and it was Ellie and that factors into what is about to happen at the end of this episode. They're ambushed by the fireflies. They're taken to the hospital. Uh, Ellie is being prepped for surgery and Joel wakes up and Marlene is there and Marlene is talking to him and whatnot. And Marlene breaks, breaks the news, you know, that she's being prepped for surgery. And he's like, prep for surgery what kind of surgery and that's when marlene breaks it down that the cordyceps are basically a part of ellie and so with that they can break it down and come up with a cure and joel tells marlene well cordyceps grow in the brain and marlene like i know and so the only way to get to this you have to open her brain up and essentially kill her in order to get this, harvest this quote unquote cure that is not a hundred percent guaranteed to happen, but is is it is a sign of hope. So Joel's not having this because he has finally found his purpose in life. He's finally found somebody to love. After twenty years, you know, he's been wandering around just aimlessly and finally found something and now is being ripped away from him again, just like his daughter was. And he's not having it. (laughs) He's not having it. Uh, As they try to take him away, take Joel out the hospital, uh, Joel goes beast mode. Uh, And I remember this uh, board in the game. This was the hardest part of the game for me. It took me forever to get through this part of the game. (laughs) <laughs> going through this hospital and um trying to find Ellie. And in this game, it wasn't, I mean, well, in this show, it was nothing like the game because Joel went through them dudes like, <laughs> like they were nothing. Joel was on a mission. 
and he found Ellie right just in the nick of time because they were just about to start working on it. Uh, he kills the doctor and uh, gets Ellie and goes down to the little parking garage so he can find find a vehicle to escape in, and Marlene is down there to meet him. And once again, cut right from the game, uh, this confrontation, and it played out just like the game. And Marlene tells him, like, look, I understand what you did. I understand why you did it, but you have to understand why we need to do this. And given it's like so Sophie's choice, the ultimate decision to make, save humanity or save this one girl. And this is the one girl you love. This is the one thing on this planet you still love. And Joel makes the choice. He chose Ellie. And he shot Marlene and killed her. Uh, right before he killed her, uh, 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 she begged for her life. And he's like, no, because you're just going to keep coming after. Her. And he shot her. And man, <laughs> it, it had just the same. It actually had more impact here than it did in the game with me. Uh, because I felt it more here. You know, I guess through the performances and the way that this played out throughout this season. And so it hit me. So I was anticipating this final conversation because once again, just like the game, there's this, it's the same conversation that ended the show also ended in the game. And Ellie knew Ellie was still kind of distant. She knew um, uh, deep down. She knows Joel lied to her because Joel told her that, you know, Oh, there's others just like you. They were working on, they really couldn't find a cure. And, you know, the the hunters or the raiders came in, they stormed the uh, hospital and I barely got you out in time, which the only raider who stormed it was him, but whatever. And Ellie knows deep down that she, that Joel is lying, but she loves Joel and she wants to be with Joel. You know what I'm saying? It, but at the same time, she also wants to serve her purpose. And that is to help, you know, try to be a help or a cure to, for this disease. So she flat out asks him or uh, demands an a answer. Like, swear to me, swear to me that everything you said is true. And without blinking, without, without hesitating, Joel lied. <laughs> Joel, he, I swear. <laughs> And Ellie, you know, she has that look. She just gives that little look like he lied, you know, but she rolls with you. Okay. And it cuts to black and that's the end of the season. And it was like, oh man, this is killer, man. Cause she knows, man. And that's the, it, I know, I know it would kill her to know the truth and she knows the truth, but she doesn't want to hear the truth, you know? It's like, it's like a loved one. It's like when you, when somebody lies to you that you love or respect and you know that it's a bald face lie, but you don't want to call them out on it. You know, it's, it's that feeling. <laughs> it's that same feeling because the truth will hurt just as much, if not more. So you just let it go. And that's what it, that's what happened here. Oh man. This was, this was look perfect, perfect show. Honestly, perfect show, especially if you are a fan of the video games. This is hands down. And I know I've been hinting to it. I've been mentioning it throughout the reviews of this season. But now I can honestly say, solidify it right now. This was the greatest video game adaptation ever, ever. Uh, perfectly cast. Uh, kudos to... Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey who played Joel and Ellie respectively. Uh, awesome, awesome job. All the supporting cast who came through, um, the actors who played Henry and Sam, the actors, actress who played Tess, uh, Barlene, all of them, uh, uh, David from last season, all, I mean, last episode, great job by all of them. Also, a great job of casting the actors and actresses who had roles in the video game and putting them in 
some in some cases different roles. The actress who played Marlene also played Marlene in the game. So she's the only one that stayed consistent throughout. But everybody else, you know, Ellie, uh uh Ashley Johnson, she played a different character. Uh uh uh, uh Troy Baker. I don't know why I couldn't get his name out. Troy Baker, who played Joel in the video game. We saw him last week as James, I believe his name was, and it, many other characters throughout. Uh, uh, trying to think of the actor's name. It was just on the tip of my tongue. Nick Overman, Offerman, I think, uh, who played Bill. And that Bill and Frank episode, wow. <laughs> you know, all these episodes, there were no filler episodes here. All the episodes were bangers. Uh, I know a lot of people probably look at this show and be like, man, there wasn't really a lot of infected. You know, I thought this was going to be a show about zombies and all that other stuff. But, you know, but this you had to play the game. Me, it wasn't a shock. I know a lot of people who didn't play the game. It probably was a shock. Like, where, where are they infected? <laughs> you know, but The Last of Us is a, a deeper story, a more uh, cerebral story, uh, uh, drama, um, love story, father and daughter story. There's so much that goes into this brother's story is a lot in this and they did a excellent job of displaying this uh or adapting it should i say on to television and i enjoyed it immensely the last of us episode nine entitled look for the light gets an a and the overall season of the last of us on hbo and hbo max all nine episodes gets an a plus amazing television i was looking forward to this show i did not know this show was going to be this doggone good i really didn't i mean uh even with them pretty much copying and pasting from the game to the show they still found a way to add different elements to it add backstories that didn't exist in the game add different characters that uh, uh helped move the story along just a little better you know things of that nature I, man look awesome awesome job by uh craig mazin and neil Druckmann. beautiful i cannot wait for season two everybody did you enjoy this first season of the last of us um, I'm, I'm over the moon excited for the second season, even though I know the second season most likely will be based on part two and part two is very dark. It's very, <laughs> it's very, very complicated. And I, I'm, I'm now, now I'm getting scared. I, I want to see how they handle part two of the game on television. Uh, part one, I'm not going to say was easy. But it was it was a more film friendly game to adapt. Uh whereas part two, I don't know if it is. Uh I have to go back and play part two. Uh part two I played when I first got it. I have to go back and play it again because there's a lot that I don't remember from it. But I do remember major po- points in it that I'm like, ooh, I don't know if people are gonna rock with this <laughs> rock with this. It is not the stuff that you probably thinking about, but it it is uh it's very dark. It's very dark. But we'll see. Maybe they'll go a different route. Actually, at this point, they're free to do whatever. You know, honestly, they're free to do whatever because they're they've covered part one. So if they want to have a filler season where they have different stories, new stories, uh uh, uh new characters, feel free, you know. <laughs> feel free that's fine and then maybe season three we hop into uh part two who knows i don't know i'm not a showrunner i have confidence in this team because they've done an excellent job thus far but i want to know what you think about it you can email the show kb radio podcast at gmail.com also look me up on twitter at kb radio network and on other social media platforms just look up the kb radio network if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, 
iHeartRadio, wherever you're currently listening to, YouTube as well. Don't forget about the five stars, the reviews, and sharing this show with your loved ones and subscribing to the YouTube channel. Thank you very much for continuing to support this show. I love you all for it. I can't wait. I cannot wait for season two. I don't know when it's coming. <laughs> I don't know when it's coming, but it's it's not it's not soon enough. I, I need it now. It's going to be an empty void in my life for the next year and a half, maybe, maybe two years. I don't know when they're going to start filming or, or, or start developing. Uh, they not too long announced that they were greenlit for season two. I don't know what took them so long, but uh, <laughs> they just now uh, greenlit it uh, maybe about a month ago. So we'll see when we get season two of The Last of Us. But in any event, I want you all to know that I love you. Continue to love one another. And until we speak again, everybody, you all be blessed.